All right, well, we're gonna give this a shot. This is gonna be the first video filmed with uh, my new camera set up. Um, been wanting a camera for a while because up until this point, everything on this channel has been filmed with my phone. And so uh, nice to add a little bit of better quality, but I'm still learning how everything works. So bear with me and hopefully this will go smoothly. In this video, what I'm gonna be working on is a temperature probe for a rifle barrel chamber. And these are things that I don't think you can just go buy. Um, you can get temperature probes and you can use one in a barrel chamber, but they're not really made specifically for that. Um, and I'm just gonna hack one together using some basic parts. Um, I'm gonna be using some 100K NTC thermistors, which is basically just a resistor that changes its resistance based on how hot it is. You put these in a voltage divider network, feed them into the analog pin of a microcontroller, and I'm gonna be using this TTGO, which is a ESP32 board um, made by, I think it's Lilligo or something like that. Anyway, uh, the only reason I picked this board is because it has built-in battery management and a built-in little OLED display screen here. So uh, basically, like I said, you put these in a voltage divider, and send an output to an analog pin, and then this thing can convert that into a temperature reading. Um, I'm gonna have to make a 3D printed body basically for these, and my plan is to model it off of a cartridge, but it's gonna be longer because I have to be able to get it in and out. And I plan on putting one thermistor right at the throat, so just past the neck of the case, and then I'll probably try to put another one into the uh, the body um, of the chamber somewhere just to get a couple of readings in there. Um, and my plan is to use these, uh, these little pen clips, and I'm gonna try to see if I can uh, cut these down to hold the thermistors where I want them, kind of use them as springs. Um, but we'll see, because this is gonna be a, a small little 3D printed uh, object. Uh, and so that's gonna require a bit of fooling around with to uh, to make everything work. Also got some switches and I'm gonna be running this off of battery. I don't want it to go to sleep. And so, uh, you know, when it's on, I want it to be on. I'm gonna control the power with just a switch. So I got a bunch of little micro switches here. Um, so the next step, I need to create a 3D printed housing to uh, put these thermistors in. Um, my plan is probably use like four probes at a time. Uh, two in the chamber, one probably on the outside of the barrel, and uh, a fourth one just for ambient temperature readings with this thing. So um, I'm going to have to make a little case with a bunch of inputs where I can plug these things, pull them in and out. Uh, we'll see. Again, I haven't done this. I've just got the parts together and ready to go. So next step, let's put the thing together. All right, so here's the uh, prototype so far, and I've got one kind of hot out of the oven here. So with these probes, uh, what I'm trying to do is get one right at the throat of the chamber, and then I've got another slot that's gonna be more in the body of the chamber. And originally I thought I was gonna be using some spring clips like this to hold the, the probe into place, but uh, in testing that doesn't really look like that's gonna be an issue. So with the, uh, the final version, what I'm gonna be doing is just have the probe at the tip, one at the, uh, the side for the chamber wall, um, and that's kind of it. I, I've kind of found that you don't really need any spring pressure to keep that probe right at the end. So I'll show you what's going on inside of here. So uh, here's what the inside look, it took me a little bit to get this one cleaned up. Um, and Basically, I've just got a couple channels in there and I can take one of these probes and I'll basically put it in there so that it aligns right at that tip. And then I've got these channels where I can route the signal wires. Um, and I'll probably just tack this into there with uh, a little bit of hot glue just to keep it in place while I uh, hold the thing together. And then I've got a couple of uh, small two millimeter uh, screw holes in there so that I can hold the thing together. and. So functionally, it works the same as this prototype here, except for I've just moved the screw hole locations just to uh, snug it up a little bit better. But whenever it goes into the chamber, the uh, the tip of this little probe uh, will end up right at the edge of the throat. 
and then I'll have another one that will be right at the chamber wall. And so I'll be able to have two probes give me a couple of different contact points within the chamber. So uh, let me get this thing put together real quick, and then we'll give it a test. All right, so I'm going to reuse the probe out of this. By the way, these are 3D printed in a material called ASA, which is similar to ABS um, in that it's a little bit of a higher temperature filament compared to PLA. Because I'm putting these into a uh, firearms chamber that's, you know, their intent is to uh, figure out how hot the thing is, because I imagine it's fairly hot, but, you know, it shouldn't be like crazy. It shouldn't be up in the range of like, um, you know, four or 500 degrees. It shouldn't be that hot, but it should be pretty hot. And so I wanted something that was going to hold up better than PLA. Um, and so that's why I'm using ASA. It's also uh, UV stable or at least uh, more UV resistant compared to ABS. So it is a little tricky the way I've designed this to get uh, the probes in. So uh, now that I have this thing kind of assembled, uh, as far as the demo, I'm gonna go check it and see if it fits in the chamber. Um, it should, but uh, I may have these probes sticking out just a touch. And so if I need to, I can pull them um, by loosening these screws. I'll be able to pull them back a little bit um, so it's actually better to start them off a little long and then pull them back, but let's go do a chambering test. All right, so just to show you how this thing works, again, it's pretty straightforward. You just feed it into the chamber and then it will stop uh, with about an inch. That way you can grab onto this uh, little tab to pull it back out. And uh, yeah, it, it seems to uh, to fit well enough and the uh, the tip of the uh, the front probe is landing right at the edge of the uh, the throat so uh the next thing i'll have to do is i'm going to be using just uh, an esp32 like i showed you with the display and so i've got to work up the uh the interface and the software side of things all right so i've got the the breakout board put together and uh i'll show you kind of what i've got going on here um so the board that I'm using has a power input on the back, and so that will plug into this. And I want to be able to turn it on and off, and so I've got that wired through this uh, little on-off switch. And I bent some pins on a connector on the bottom so that I can plug in a battery. And then I'll have an on-off switch and I'm getting power. Um, so the other thing here is I've got a few connectors and um, this is a double connector basically. And so I'm gonna use this for the main sensor. And then I've got an auxiliary that probably I can put a sensor on the outside of the barrel. And then you can see right here, um, I have basically what's gonna be an ambient or local temperature measurement. So just one more thermistor there. So on the top side of the board, you'll see these four resistors. Each one of these is a uh, 100K resistor because um, I've got 100K thermistors. Um, these are basically the top leg of a voltage divider and the thermistor is gonna be the bottom resistor in that voltage divider. And so basically there's one for each one of the sensors. And basically as they get hotter, um, the voltage is going to decrease coming into the system. I don't have the analog read pins hook up, but basically all I'm going to have to do is run uh, one wire from each one of the resistors into an analog pin um, on this main board, and then that will be all the wiring done. Um, and so next up, I'm going to put this in an enclosure, and then we can start testing some things out. And by the way, it doesn't really matter um, polarity on anything because a thermistor is basically just a resistor that is sensitive to temperatures. It doesn't really matter which direction things flow, so polarity is not really a consideration in wiring any of this up. All right, so uh, I think I've finally gotten the enclosure ready to go. This has actually taken a lot of work. You know, 3D printing always seems to take just the most time just getting all the tolerances and dimensions and everything right this tool can make cleaning up 3d print a lot easier it's a, a read uh deburring tool um also using a, a hobby knife again if if you're new to 3d printing or you do it a lot and you don't have these uh really makes life a lot easier whenever you're cleaning up brims and things like that so let me get this cleaned up and we'll see how it goes together
So I've got these four yellow wires. Each one of these is the readout from each of these sensors and they are mapped into some analog read pins. I've also got this uh, little purple wire. That is the high side that's gonna feed everything from the regulated 3.3 uh, volt output. Um, that's the only connections that the board needs because the display is built in. Um, the power over here um, runs underneath into the board via this on off switch. And so I should be able to plug this battery in. All right, so battery plugged in. Let me tuck the wires in. And uh, then we'll put this on. Get everything lined up good. There we go. And when I flip it on, we get the screen. Now the screen looks like it's currently upside down, but that can be easily rotated. Uh, in software. And so there it's just running through its little demo. And that's it. So from there, I just need to uh, put the screws in and we should be good to go. By the way, uh, if you ever do any 3D printing and try to use hex dots, they often don't fit uh, really well and they're kind of hard to get in. So a little trick is to thread them onto the end of a screw. That way you can keep them flush whenever they go in and that'll keep them from getting tilted. All right, so I uh, got the case all together. You can see the 3D prints aren't perfect. Um, it does look like there's a bit of expansion and a little bit of drift. Um, whenever you're printing something kind of thick, eh, it happens. Uh, no big deal, it did go together okay. Also, the other mistake is I did seem to uh, get a little bit of either vertical shrinkage or something. Um, you know, the stack up is thinner on this end than this end. Um, not really sure. I can't see any difference really. Um, again, 3D printing is not perfect and that's kind of probably what I can expect. Uh, I could try to find shorter screws, maybe a five millimeter shorter screw, or I could thicken this thing up a little bit to work better, but honestly, that's gonna be good enough. Um, so the next part, getting this thing programmed. And so I've got the USB-C connector over here. And so it ought to be pretty easy because all we've got to do is just set up uh, the four sensors and get them to read out on the display. All right. Well, you know, as always, that ended up being a lot more work than I had uh, expected. I get this thing programmed. I thought, ah, you know, it's just, you know, four little thermistors, ADC reads, that's it, right? Uh, get the uh, display up and running, no big deal. Um, I decided to use ChatGPT because I was just so sure that it was gonna be that easy and I ended up chasing my tail thinking that I had ADC issues and all types of problems. And it turns out that uh, ChatGPT just got the samples mixed up whenever it was doing the uh, running averages. And so it was dividing everything by five times as many observations as it should. That is a real problem. So I uh, got all that lined out, got everything working, and it's pretty good. Again, uh, I've just got a little switch for the power uh, that cuts the battery on and off. Um, I'm using a 10 sample running average. I'm updating the screen 10 times a second. It does kind of suck on the redraw, uh, but I wasn't able to get the hardware serial working with the display. Um, I'm using an Adafruit. Uh, library and so I had to use software serial and anyway it's slow um, but it is pretty good um, here's the ambient and so you can see that uh, PA uh, that's the uh, the ambient and uh, you know put my finger on it. you can see it it updates pretty quick as far as accuracy um, I'll do a, a quick test let me let it stabilize here it's yeah it takes it a bit to uh, to adjust these things aren't you know super super fast but uh, so here I've got a thermopin. These are a very nice instant read thermometer and they're supposed to be within a half a degree accurate. So if I open this thing up, see it's reading 81. So that's pretty good to me. You know, I mean, this thing reading within a half degree of what a calibrated thermometer does, uh, you know, I was thinking maybe it would be within five degrees or so. Uh, it, 10 would honestly be fine, but um, yeah, that's pretty good. So I've got some external sensors. And so uh, the one that I had started off with, the chamber sensor, it is a bit rat's nesty with the wires um, because these things just came in a loose bundle, but plug that in here. 
And there is the uh, the chamber sensor. And so I've got the uh, the throat and the chamber there. And here's the throat. You can see it updates on the throat pretty quick. And then um, here is the one that's going to be in the chamber wall. If I put my thumb on that, see it start to climb. So all of these are, are pretty good. Now, as far as accuracy, again, if they're within five degrees, I am more than happy. Uh, the code's also set up to I can switch this to Celsius, you know, if I want to, but I don't want to because Celsius, eh, it's not very useful for what I'm doing. I know people are like, oh, science, but uh, look, all of our temperature scales are arbitrary anyway. It's just, uh, it, it doesn't really matter. So I like Fahrenheit because that's easy for me to understand. Um, what else can I show you? I've also got uh, one other sensor wired up. Um, this is just an auxiliary, so I've got that PE, the external, and so uh, this one is just so that I can maybe put this on the outside of the barrel or something like that. Just gives me one more um, sensor that I can put somewhere and do something with. So as I, you know, set all these out here in the same area, you'll see that one says not connected. Um, I. I'd say one problem is the wires on these thermistors are quite small. And so my connectors, I'm going to have to be really careful um, with pulling those out so I don't pull those wires right out. So I should have used a smaller uh, connector that would uh, crimp onto those wires a little better. But uh, that would have required redesigning everything as far as the case um, and the board, the, the breakout board, I, I really, really didn't want to do that. So um, I'm going to leave it like this, and I'll just have to be careful and only pry on the connector. But uh, that's it. So let me go grab a rifle, and we'll do a quick test to make sure that the thing actually works. And the temperature looks like is about the same in my gun safe, so 79 degrees there. I pull this out, you'll see it, it does change just a touch, but apparently everything in here is about the same temperature. I did actually end up going out and doing some real live tests. I only put five shots down the barrel and I didn't get video because it was just brutally hot outside and so I, I didn't spend a lot of time out there. But you can see that the barrel did come up uh, roughly 10 degrees above ambient while I was out there. Um, I also learned that I do need to make sure before I do any real tests that I let everything come up to ambient temperature because the uh, the guns coming out of the, uh, the gun case were quite a bit cooler than the actual ambient temperature uh, whenever I started. So that's a good thing to remember that you got to let everything kind of acclimate before you start testing for any uh, thermal impact of uh, firing on the chamber. Um, I will put up the, the code for this. Um, I'm not going to put up the 3D prints. And the honest answer is I was going to. But the 3D prints for all of this are so specific to exactly what I used. Um, and the exact kind of setup I'm running that I don't think they're actually going to be useful for anybody else. You know, I showed video of how it's assembled. And so if anybody, you know, wants to build their own in CAD, that, that should give you a good guidance for how I did it. But unless you're planning on using exactly the same everything, including connectors, Vero board, you know, chamber dimensions, your 3D printer setup, the tolerances were so tight, um, especially on the, uh, the sensor body. Uh, it's just, it's not worth it, honestly. Um, it just have people chasing their tails. So. Um, I'm not going to be posting 3D prints, but I will be posting the code. Uh, that way, if anybody wants to use it as a base to build, you know, something like this your own, um, you know, I think it would be a, a good starting point if somebody were wanting to do another project like this or something like um, an oven or a smoker or something like that where you needed multiple temperature sensors. Uh, you know, this is a, a decent little base to start at that, you know, then you could control other things based on temperature using these thermistors. But um, very simple little thing uh, that I'm kind of proud of just because it, it ended up taking a lot more work. The vast majority of this, this project was all 3D prints. The code I spent eh, probably four or five hours today messing with the code. Uh, the hardware side of things really didn't take very long at all because it's very, very simple wiring. It was the 3D prints. I spent days, at least three days, uh, printing, reprinting, measuring, retesting, 
and getting all the 3D prints to work. So that's where the real struggle with this project was. Anyway, um, if you'd like to see this in action, I'll probably be posting a follow-up video, hopefully within the next week or two, where I actually test um, how quickly the chamber heats up and cools off um, following some firing, because I really am interested to see whether this carbon fiber barrel um, is any better or worse at heat dissipation compared to a, a regular steel barrel. Anyway, so that's all I got. If you got any feedback, comments, or if you just think I've totally screwed everything up um, or could have done something way easier, you know, feel free to leave a comment down below. So with that, that's all I've got for this video. I appreciate your time.